Hello and welcome to this MOOC about STM32U5 CAID RDP. During this hands-on, we will learn how to provision OM keys. We will see together how we do a CAID RDP regression, including from RDP level 2, and we will see how to remove and modify those keys. But first, let's check together the setup we will use. For this hands-on, we will use a Nucleo U575ZQ and the GPIO toggle trust zone code example delivered in the stm 32 cube 5 This is a trust zone application with do some late blinking from secure and non-secure application. In the material of this hands zone, we provide you a pre-compiled binaries. First, we need to activate the trust zone and configure the first bank of flash as secure and the second bank as non-secure thanks option byte. Then we will flash the secure and the non-secure binaries. During this hands on, we will use the STM32Q programmer version 2.9.0 in command line. Please ensure the STLing firmware of your Nucleo is up to date according to the Q programmer version used. As previously stated, we will use STM32Q programmer in command line. Here is a list of the command line we will use to achieve our prerequisites. First, we will set option byte. So, first I display them. I set the trust zone one, then the flash watermark, then the two commands to flash the non-secure binaries and the secure binary, and the last command is just to launch the firmware upgrade of your STLing if needed. So first I plug my Nucleo U575ZD, and I will first launch the update of the STLing firmware, just to be sure, I would say, in my command line. I'm just in the folder of the Cube Programmer bin. And this will open this window and I can open in update mode. As you can see the version, current version is V3G8M3 and I can update it to the last one. So let's do this upgrade. Okay, the upgrade finished successfully. So now I'm ready, I will set to work. Let's first display the current option byte. So the command line for the Cube Programmer, the port is software debugging link, mode under reset, and I do option byte display. So just this basic command. So what is the current configuration? RDP level zero. Trust zone is not enabled, so I need to enable it. I can see, I would say, uh, the flash watermark because the trust zone is not yet enabled. So first I will enable trust zone. Now if I display again, I will say my option byte. Trust zone is now enabled, of course. But now I can find the flash watermark. As you can see, the first bank is as secure and the second bank is also secure. So I have to modify this. So in this command, I set again the first one just to ensure that everything is in line. So first bank is secure and the second bank is not secure. So I will take this command. Sorry, just and now configuration should be okay. Then I will flash the binaries. So first the non-secure one. And then the secure one. Sorry. And now if I press reset, I should have a LED blinking, which is the case. So I would say that now we are ready to start uh, our hands-on. This hands-on scenario will have seven steps. The first step will be the key provisioning. That means to write in the option byte the OM keys. Then we will change the RDP level from level zero to level two. Now, thanks to the OOM2 key, we are able to do the regression from level 2 to 
to level 1. And then from the level 1 to the level 0 0.5. To be able to come back to level 0, we need to go through the level 1. And now, thanks to the OM1 key, we are able to do the regression to level 0. The last step will be to remove the OM keys. Let's start with the key provisioning. To check if our device have been already provisioned, we can check the OM log bit in the flash NSSA register. This is an extract from the reference manual of the U5. So if I check the flash NSSA register, I should have zero, that means no OM key are there. And to provision the key, we've got this basic command line with Cube Programmer with a lock ADP parameter and then the value of the OM1 key. Then we can check again the flash NSSA register. So first let's check the flash NSSA register. So I will just display the correct address, I will say. Everything is to zero, that means our bit 18 or 19 zero, no OM key have been provisioned yet. So I can just now do the provisioning of the OM1 key with this value, okay? And we have to remind this one because we can read it back after. So I will just load the command. And as you can see, lock hdp one password successfully done. It was expected. Now let's check again the flash and the register. And now you can see that the bit 18 has been set to one. So we know that the target has been provisioned properly. For the OM2 key is quite similar. We just change the parameter lock ADP1 to lock ADP2 and we set a different value for the OM2 key. So the provisioning of the second key, I check again the flash NSSA register just to be sure. For the moment, just a OM1 key have been provisioned. So I will provision the OM2 keys with this specific value. And if I check again the NSSR, as you can see, now the bit 19 has been set to 1. So we have finished the provisioning. The second step is to activate ADP level 2. Please ensure you properly provision OM2 key before this step, because if you don't do this, you will break your device. So to switch on the ADP level 2, it's just to write in the option byte. I would say in a classical way. Uh, I would take the opportunity here to experiment the command to get the authentication ID of the device. Obviously, the values that you will see on your device will be different from the one I'm using here. So now we will move to HDP level 2. For sure, it's not something we do so much often. And as we are provisioned, we are sure that we will manage to recover the board. So let's launch it. Okay, you've got this error because it can't reconnect for sure, as we have in specific mode with HDP level 2. The LED are not blinking, I need to do a power on reset, so I unplug this jumper, or you can just unplug and replug the USB cable. In this mode, I can still get the authentication ID. So I've got this specific command, and here you can see even if there is some error, you can see here the debug identification ID. Now let's trigger the regression from ADP level 2 to ADP level 1. So as you can see in the command line, to unlock ADP level 2, we need to give the OM2 key value that we provisioned previously. Once this command has been launched, the regression will be automatically set. You will have some error message due to the STM32 cube programmer can't connect anymore on such kind of things, but you can ignore them. So let's experiment this. So let's unlock our HDP level 2 and do the regression to HDP level 1. So for this, I use this command and you can see unlock HDP with the OM2 key. My LED is not blinking, that means I need to do a power on reset. So before starting, up. Everything is fine. I can load the command right now. So you've got some error message, but in fact, 
if I just plug and plug and if I check ADP, I was able to connect and as you can see ADP level is FF which means level 1. The regression was done automatically. Okay, so we managed to recover from ADP level 2 and it was for the first time on a SGM32. The next step is the regression from level 1 to level 0.5 and you remember this means that the non-secure application will be automatically erased. So here we will need to use the OM2 key to be able to do this regression. So for the regression from level 1 to level 0.5, first we need to unlock the ADP regression and then to set the option by to the correct value. So here we have two commands, one to unlock the regression and give the OM2 key value and then we can set the ADP option by to 55 which is 0.5. To finish just this step we will flash again the non-secure application which have been automatically erased by this regression. So let's unlock ADP 0.5. So we unlock ADP1 with the OM2 key value. Now I do the regression of the ADP level to 0 0.5, which implies the errors of the non tq application. Here I can do an OB display if you want, just to show you what are the value. You can see we are in ADP 0 0.5 now this trace is not correct. So uh, I will flash again my non-secure application because if I just do a power on reset here, as you can see, no LED blinking at all. But if I flash again my non-secure application and do power on reset, the LED blinking is there. Now we want to come back to ADP level zero, but for this we must first go to ADP level one. So this is a basic command just to set the option byte. Nothing specific here, so I think I will do the step five and the step six at the same time on my targets. So on the last CAD ADP regression we have not tested yet is the regression from level one to level zero, thanks the OM1 key, which implies a full flash mass errors. So two command is needed for this regression. First, we need to unlock the ADP regression with the unlock ADP1 parameter and the OM1 key value. And then we can set the option byte ADP to AA, which is a level zero. So to do the regression to level zero, I have to go to the ADP level one first. So I'm switching to ADP level one. Now the flash is locked as we are switching. If I do a power on reset, my LED is blinking. Now I will unlock first the ADP0 regression. So unlock ADP1 and I give the OM1 key. Now I can trigger the regression to level 0, which implies a full flash mass errors. If I check the option byte now, you can see that you're with HDP level zero and the flash is empty. The last step is to remove the OM keys. So here, removing a key, in fact, is to set its value to FFFF, okay? So I will just check the flash and SSL register before. I will set the OM1 key to FFF, then I can check the flash and SSL register after. To remove the OM2 key, it's similar. You just need to change the parameter lock ADP1 to lock ADP2 and set the value to FFFF. So if I read the flash and SSL register, so you've got the bit. And 19 and 18 that have been set because the OM keys are here. If I erase the OM1 key, erase is in fact set it to the value FFFFFF. So if I do this, 
And if I check again the flush NSSL register, as you can see, the bit has changed. So it was a bit 18, if I will remember. And if I do the same things for the OM2 key, so just the parameter change. Then if I check now, no more OM keys. So this is the way how to remove the OM keys and you can set a new value if you want or keep this LDP legacy mode. We are reaching the end of this presentation. So I would like to point out some useful documentation the reference manual and also the AN5347 where you can find many information about the KDDP. So we have seen together how U5 KDDP allows to control the regression of the IDP from any level, including the level 2, and this in a secure way. You need to know the OM key value to be able to do a regression. An important point this does not impact the level of protection of the flash content. I hope you like this video and thank you for your attention.